Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our morning prayer on this Wednesday morning, this glorious day of sunshine yet again. You will see on the, the tableau in front of the camera, we have the candle signifying the light of the world, who is Christ, but also ourselves, called to shine in the dark world for him. And of course, that's part of our motto verse for this year. The empty cross signifying both the reality of Good Friday, but the victory signified an Easter day through the empty tomb. And this morning, a padlock with a couple of keys. If you look closely, you'll see that the padlock is transparent. You can see the inner mechanism. And the theme this morning in our prayers is the great unlocking. Easter is the great unlocking. When Jesus died and declared that it was complete, the temple curtain was torn in two, signifying that the way into God's presence had been unlocked. When the disciples were huddled together for fear of their enemies, Jesus came and breathed the unlocking of peace into their troubled hearts and minds. And if you were listening to the news last night and this morning, there's great hope that there might be the unlocking of a cure through the vaccine research that's being done in various universities, but also the need to unlock supply chains of PPE so that equipment can get to those who need it most. So as we begin our prayers, we symbolically unlock the padlock. Because Jesus is the key, he is the one that brings about the great unlocking. And so we come to him in our situation of locked downness, recognising that we have been through Easter unlocked and that through our unlocking, we can, through prayer, join with God in the unlocking of our world. So we're on the uh, morning prayer from Common Worship, uh, morning prayer for the Wednesday, the 22nd of April. And if you're following the liturgy, then we say the words in bold. O Lord, open our lips, and, and our mouth, mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let and heaven and earth rejoice. rejoice. Alleluia. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. We are going to have a hymn this morning. This is a song based um, on the passage from Lamentations and from the Psalms. Um, it's called Wisdom and Grace and it's by a group called Bifrost Arts. <laughs> Just in number our days that we may apply our hearts to your ways. Oh, teach us to number our days with wisdom and grace, wisdom and grace, wisdom and grace, wisdom and grace. You've been our
night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 16. The Lord is at my right hand. I shall not fall. Preserve me, O God, for in you have I taken refuge. I have said to the Lord, You are my Lord. All my good depends on you. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble in heart. Though the idols are legion that many run after, their drink offerings of blood I will not offer, neither make mention of their names upon my lips. The Lord himself is my portion and my cup. In your hands alone is my fortune. My share has fallen in a fair land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel, and in the night watches he instructs my heart. I have set the Lord always before me. He is at my right hand. I shall not fall. Wherefore, my heart is glad and my spirit rejoices. My flesh also shall rest secure. For you will not abandon my soul to death nor suffer your faithful one to see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is the fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures for evermore. The, the Lord, Lord is at my right, right hand. hand. I, I shall not fall. fall. Give to us, Lord Christ, the fullness of grace, your presence and your very self, for you are our portion and our delight, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So moving forward, we come to our New Testament reading, which Julia is going to read for us this morning. This is Colossians chapter 2, verses 1 to 15. For I want you to know how much I am struggling for you, and for those in Laodicea, and for all who have not seen me face to face. I want their hearts to be encouraged and united in love, so that they may have all the riches of assured understanding and have the knowledge of God's mystery, that is, Christ himself, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I am saying this so that no one may deceive you with plausible arguments. For though I am absent in body, yet I am with you in spirit, and I rejoice to see your morale and the firmness of your faith in Christ. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe and not according to Christ. For in him, the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily and you have come to fullness in him who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him when he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. 
Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your sting? Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound and the dead shall be raised. Where, Where O death, death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, Where O death, death, is your sting? And now we have the Benedictus, the song of Zechariah. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his prophets of old, God promised to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet in the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. In our intercessions this morning, we think about my transparent padlock. Transparent because you can see the inner workings, you can see the mechanism, you can see what causes the padlock to be locked and therefore can see more easily how it can be opened. When we come to God in our intercessions, we're not giving him our solutions and asking him to implement them. We're praying to the God who, as it says in the Psalms, his eyelids test the hearts of men. He already knows the answers. We need to listen to his voice. So as we bring to him our intercessions this morning, we do so asking for God's guidance for ourselves, for our community and our community leaders, for our government and for the governments of the world. In our prayers this morning, there will be an opportunity for you to um, pray where you are, either put the names in the box or uh, say them out loud or say them in the silence of your heart as we go to each part of our intercessions. And the responses this morning are when I say the words, Lord, hear us, we respond, Lord, graciously, graciously hear us. us. So let us pray. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. us. Holy God, though this world depends on your grace, it is governed and tended by mortals. So we pray for those who walk the corridors of power in the parliaments of this and other lands, whose, value, whose judgments we value or fear. We pray for our own Prime Minister for his full recovery and also for guidance in the decisions that he has to make. We particularly pray about the decision about the balance between lockdown and opening up the economy, between the harm that could be done to the lives and health of citizens and the harm that could be done to our well-being and our future prosperity. We pray for the United Nations and the World Health Organization. We pray for the leaders of the European countries and for the vexed issue of Brexit and how that is affected by the current crisis. And we bring to God the nations of the world, those who face similar problems to our own, but those whose problems are more acute because of poverty, because of environmental damage, because of uh, poverty and because of lack of resources. And so before God, we bring to him now nations and leaders and others who are on our hearts today. May those in power, with authority and responsibility, always consider those they represent. May they make decisions with courage and integrity, 
and resist any temptation to abuse the trust placed in them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who hold key positions in the worlds of finance, business and industry, whose decisions may profit some or impoverish many. We pray particularly for the boards of big companies who have difficult decisions to make given the current crisis and economic climate. We think of those businesses that have had to furlough staff, have had to change the way they operate. And as well as praying for the protection of the various businesses of our country, we also pray that this crisis may teach us different ways of doing things that are more protective of the environment and more sustaining of life's lifestyles and the well-being of families and those who work. We also want to pray for local businesses, for those who are self-employed, for those who are struggling with um, businesses that have to be closed at the moment and for wondering how um, they might make ends meet. We pray for the unlocking of the channels of support from government, the promised finances to those who need it because they're not making any money at the moment. So let's pray for local businesses. We might think of uh, Cheshire Oaks, we might think of Vauxhalls, SR, Airbus, but also the smaller businesses of our town, maybe the shops that we're used to using and cannot do so at the moment, as well as praying for the supermarkets as they continue to make sure the vital food supplies reach the nation. So let's name before God now businesses, business people, those we know or maybe have heard of, to ask for God's guidance and to ask for God to unlock the problems they currently face. Father, we're conscious that many people who make decisions that affect our lives directly or indirectly are people we've never heard of, people we've never met. Those who run companies, those who sit on boards. We pray for them, particularly in this time of crisis, that they may always value people higher than profit, that they may never impose burdens on the poor which they would not carry themselves, and that they may never divorce money from morality or ownership from stewardship. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously graciously hear hear us. We pray for those in the caring professions and in the medical support industries and laboratories around the world and in our own country. We pray for those who look after and listen to the sick, who can themselves be kind or cruel or difficult to manage. We pray also for those who are making decisions regarding our nation's health and welfare, particularly the decisions about lockdown, about isolation, about managing this crisis. We pray especially for the researchers who are looking for a vaccine and we pray for success uh, and for serendipity uh, in their researches. We pray also for the care homes in our local community and for the vulnerability of those who both work there and live there. We pray for those who visit nurses and others. We pray for those whose medical um, responsibilities include the, the normal aspects of daily life, midwives and the like. And so before God, we pray for hospitals, for caring, for, for those in the caring professions that we know, for care homes, as well as for those who are sick. Lord, we particularly pray for the unlocking of supply chains to allow PPE to reach those who need it most. We pray for joined up thinking. We pray for lines of communication. We pray for the smooth delivery of these vital resources. And we pray for those whom we've been applauding each week on a Thursday, those who work 
either directly with the sick or in support of those who do, those who work in our National Health Service. May they always sense the sanctity of life, even in these pressurised conditions. May they always recognise every person's uniqueness, despite the overwhelming numbers of those who have been brought in with COVID-19. And may they help and heal by their interest in their patients as well as by their skill. And right now, Lord, we particularly pray for the unlocking of physical strength and emotional balance in these very demanding conditions where tiredness can be as big an enemy as the virus itself. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. us. And now we pray for ourselves and for those for whom we are responsible. We may be locked in by the lockdown, but we are set free by the Spirit of Christ. And though we may not be able to visit people, we can phone them, we can remember them in our prayers, we can bring them before God. So let us remember those for whom we are responsible and to whom we are accountable in what we do today. So let's bring to God people on our hearts. It may be those for whom we are praying to come to know the love of God. It may be those who are struggling because they have a loved one in a care home whom they cannot visit. It may be those who are bereaved and to know that the funeral arrangements are going to be difficult. For whatever reason people are struggling, let's lift them to the Lord now in prayer as the unlocked people who can unlock heaven's blessings for others. Let's name them before God now. Pray for Len and Doreen Beddows. Pray for uh, my friend Stephanie. We pray for Emily, Beth, Ben and James, Sue and Alan. We pray for Jill's neighbours, Mike in hospital and Diane and family. For Doreen McGregor, for Sue, for Andy Taylor. And Father, in what is um, often a, a situation where we're thinking about illness and death. We pray that we give thanks for those who have recently given birth um, and for those families that have uh, received uh, new babies in recent days. We pray especially for Tom and Lydia Leathers. Lydia and Tom are Christians. Tom's a policeman. Lydia hosts the street pastor prayer meeting and suffers from ME, but has safely delivered of a little baby boy, Caleb, last week having had the virus herself some weeks ago. So thank you, Lord, that in the midst of suffering, there is rejoicing, that in the midst of darkness, there is always your light. And thank you, as the unlocked people of Jesus, we are able to unlock the lives of others through prayer. So may we show to those who we prayed for the thoughtfulness, tolerance and kindness of Jesus. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, hear our prayers, and if today we might be the means by which you answer the prayers of others, then may you find us neither deaf nor defiant, but keen to fulfil your purpose. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. And so we sum up our prayers in the words of our collect and in the Lord's Prayer. So first the collect. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth. Through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your, your name. name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 
Alleluia. Father, help me to live this day to the full, being true to you in every way. Jesus, help us to give ourselves away to others, being kind to everyone we meet. Spirit, give us a love for the lost, proclaiming Christ in all we do and say. So may God's blessing be upon us and those whom we love today and in the days ahead. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. Do remember we'll be praying again at 7 o'clock this evening and at 9.30 tomorrow. May God bless you this day. Take care.